So I decided to include separation by face addition and creation in the same section instead of actually doing one separation for face addition and another separation or another section for separation by face creation. And I did this because I think this is pretty similar and you will encounter this a lot and the processes uh, don't vary that much between each other. For instance, we have this special case, distillation, which we know we have either a liquid or a vapor that goes inside and you separate a distillate, which is in vapor phase, and a liquid. So here you are creating one phase. If this was a liquid feed, then you are creating vapor feed. And if you have vapor, you are creating a liquid feed. For gas absorption, it's also, let's say, interesting that we are adding another phase. So we have our gas, which requires cleaning. So we add a liquid. So in these two cases, it's very easy to separate them. Actually, if I have to make a section for separation by phase addition and another one for phase creation, these two concepts or these two processes will be very easily separated. But what will happen then with extractive distillation or azeotropic distillation, in which we are going to see that we are adding another solvent. So let's say that this was a liquid phase and we are adding a second material in order to separate a vapor phase and another liquid right here which later on is going to be separated into liquid one and liquid two so what you will see in extractive distillation is that we have both phenomena we have addition and creation of phases uh, now this the main question will be how are we going to categorize this process should we make these and I'll arrange it in the same section as normal distillation or shall we add it to the second one? But by definition, we are creating a phase. So that's why, in my opinion, it's much easier to just assume that phase addition and phase creation are both pretty similar. And you will see that this is actually the case. And it is much more convenient to analyze it this way. Okay, if the feed is a single phase solution, a second separable phase must be developed. So you can see here, guys, in distillation, you need to create a vapor. In gas absorption, you need to add a liquid. In extractive distillation, you need to add an entertainer. So as you can see, a second phase, which is and must be separable, must be developed. So this is the main scope in both phase creation and addition. You need to have a phase which is easily separable. The second phase will be either created by energy separating agent, ESA. So for instance, in the distillation example, you have a reboiler which produces the vapor. That will be the, let's say that here, heat is the technically speaking, the ESA. But in the case of gas absorption, you will be adding a liquid, which is a material. So that's why we call this the MSA. So gas absorption is by definition, MSA or requires MSA and distillation requires by definition ESA. Now, what you can imagine, you will for extractive distillation, you will need both an ESA for the vapor creation and an MSA for the solvent addition. An ESA involves the heat transfer or transfer of shaft work. We're going to see later on. You can use work in order to reduce pressure or increase pressure not only heat. An example of shaft work will be the creation of vapor due to the reduce in pressure in the system. So let's say that you have this flash drum and say that we have a piston right here and we remove it. What you're doing is increasing the volume, therefore vapor must be created. An MSA may be partially immiscible with one or more mixtures components or must be separable in a certain manner, for instance, in distillation. It is frequently the constituent of highest concentration in the added phase. So going back in the extractive distillation, the entertainer will be much higher than the actual, let's say, liquid or vapor that we are going to separate. Alternatively, the MSA may be miscible with a liquid feed mixture, but in this specific case, as I told you, you will need to eventually separate it. So in this case, maybe selectively alter partitioning species between the liquid and the vapor phase. This facilitates a separation 
such as in extractive distillation. Now, one of the main disadvantages of using MSA is, of course, if you are adding an extra material, you will need to separate them. Sometimes it's pretty easy to separate. Sometimes you will require a unique system for its separation. And therefore, you need a recycling because if once you separate these, you need to bring it back to the inlet, which implies a cost in pumping or in transport. You sometimes will be losing some material if you cannot separate these. If not all the 100% of the MSA is coming here, let's say 2% is being lost in the product or in the vent, you will need to make up for that and also means that you need to spend some money on MSA. You can also uh, contaminate or pollute your material right here, this 2%. Well, then this implies that you will need to decrease the quality of your final product and so on. When immiscible fluid phases are contacted, intimate mixing is used to enhance the mass transfer rates so that the maximum degree of partitioning of a species can be approached rapidly. After phase contact, the phases are separated by employing gravity and or an enhanced technique such as centrifugal force. So once again, we are just repeating uh, methods in which we can separate the MSA. For instance, here uh, we're using distillation, but easily you could use a decanter, which separates, let's say, a water and oil phase. And let's say that the oil phase is here, which is our product. And let's say the aqueous phase contains our MSA. Well, then you will be able to remove it. The most common separation operations based on interface mass transfer between two phases. We have been talking about these so-called interfaces. It's very important interfaces between liquid one and liquid two. Well, you have liquid one, liquid two, and you have this so-called interface in which you see interaction of both materials. Also, the same is true for the liquid and gas or liquid and vapor. You have that connection or let's say that point of interaction is the so-called interface point. Commonly, one of which will be created by an energy or material separating agent. So how do we create this? Well, if you are adding a solvent, well, by definition, you are creating this interface. If you are adding heat, you are creating a paper. Therefore, you created your ESA here. And the first case we're going to see is distillation. So let's check it out. 